Hello, I'm Jane, and I've been a member of St Michael's Orkham since 1975. I would like to reflect on gifts and talents and how God calls us all by name. I have three short readings. The first verses from Isaiah chapter 49. The Lord called me before I was born, while I was in my mother's womb he named me. And in chapter 43, I have called you by name, you are mine. A verse from Psalm 139, one of my favourites. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. And from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. As a speech and language therapist, I spent my working life alongside some of the most marginalised and misunderstood people in society children and adults with often severe physical and intellectual disabilities, either from birth or acquired at a later stage. I work with children who were unable to meet the expectations placed on us, all of us, by the society we live in, to learn, to succeed, to be productive, to fit in. And as they failed to keep up with their peers, they were often put into segregated schools or classes. And for many years, I worked in long stay hospitals across Somerset where hundreds of people labelled mentally handicapped, a term long since replaced by learning disability or difficulty, had been incarcerated since early childhood because they were seen as less than perfect. These hospitals were thankfully closed down in the late 1980s and people moved into community settings. And although this improved some lives immeasurably, we still hear 40 years on horror stories of abuse in some homes in the United Kingdom. And it's not so long ago that people were exterminated in Nazi concentration camps for the same reason. They were not perfect. It makes me ask the question, why is it that we so undervalue those whom God has called by name just like us? Someone who has greatly influenced my thinking is Henri Nouwen, a Dutch Roman Catholic priest who died in 1996 and who spent many years living and teaching in the L'Arche Daybreak community in Toronto, a home for people with learning and physical disabilities. In an interview, the question arose, we don't see these people fitting in, do we? We have a misconception about them that's very sad. Henri replied, it is very true, quite often people with handicaps, whatever their handicaps, are considered marginal in our society. They don't make money, they're not productive and all of that. But they are the real poor. Jesus doesn't say blessed are those who care for the poor. Jesus doesn't say blessed are those who help the poor. He says, blessed are the poor. That means the blessing of God is right there in their vulnerability, in their weakness, and that is what I experience. God gives enormous gifts to people who come to our community through those who are most weak and handicapped. As Henri Nouwen did, I found the greatest joy in working with people who have learning disabilities. I've learnt more from them than they have ever learnt from me, and it is something beyond words. It is a recognition of all that makes another human being uniquely who they are. I have realised the difference between talents and gifts, and I'd like to read you what Henri Nouwen says on talents and gifts in one of his many books, Life of the Beloved. He says, it is worthwhile making a distinction between talents and gifts. More important than our talents are our gifts. We may only have a few talents, but we have many gifts. Our gifts are the many ways in which we express our humanity. They are part of who we are. Friendship, kindness, patience, joy, peace, gentleness, love, hope, trust, and many others. These are the true gifts we have to offer to each other. Somehow, I've known this for a long time, especially through my personal experience of the enormous healing power of these gifts. But since my coming to live in a community with mentally handicapped people, I have rediscovered this simple truth. 
Few, if any, of those people have talents they can boast of. Few are able to make contributions to our society that allow them to earn money, compete on the open market or win awards. But how splendid are their gifts. Henri's final book, Adam the Beloved, was written shortly before his death and after the death of Adam Arnett, a man who could neither speak or move without help. Henri was asked to be his carer when he moved into the last daybreak community. He movingly explains how Adam was not only his friend, but his teacher and guide. Through his book, he helps us to see what I found, how people with few or no talents or abilities can be great gifts to us, if only we let them in. I'd like to finish by reading the recollections of Adam's brother, Michael, after Adam died. Michael also lived in the Daybreak community and had learning difficulties, but he was able to speak hesitantly in short sentences, finding words difficult. His carer wrote his words down at his request. After Adam died, me did go right over to Father Henri's place, Dayspring. He talked to me about Adam. Me say to him, I don't know why Adam was like that, dead. How come people die? Father Henri says to me, what stays in my head, Father Henri says, my father is up in heaven and my brother is up in heaven. I loved Adam this much. Father Henri give me a big hug. I cried. I hugged Father Henri. I got my voice on a tape with Henri talking about Adam on the tape. Me did go in that car, Father Henri's car. Father Henri say to me, you want to cry, you come over to my house. Father Henri missed Adam too. When Father Henri died, I felt sad. My heart was broken. Father Henri is with Adam in heaven now with God. Michael, in the simplest of words, expresses the truth of the resurrection. No matter what people have called us, no matter what we have called ourselves, God knows us and calls us by name. We are all valued by God. Lord, I thank you for knowing me, loving me and calling me by name. I find comfort in knowing that I am your beloved. I reject the names and labels that have been placed on me and I walk in the liberty of being called your child. Amen.